This is the fourth part of Module 2. And what we want to deal with here is how do you actually connect to the storage array and how do you connect to the relational database. In theory, it should be fairly simple and fairly straightforward. I have experienced problems in making this connection work with some handshaking situations going on between the two different um, locations. So again, a storage array would be a place that you have lots of storage space that you connect to from your desktop. And then while you're making that map and your data is there in that storage array, what you want to be able to do is then when you go to your ArcGIS server, that that data is not actually transferred to your server. It stays on the storage array and you just make a connection between the storage array and the server. So that's what we're really after. Um, you may need to make some permissions that it's going to be between your local computer and your storage array. So you may need to create a local account on your storage array um, with the same name and password as one that's on the um, actual server. So this is some, some things that I've ran into with handshaking issues here. Um, in general, as long as you have permissions between the two, you should be able to make them talk. Now we're going to actually have to be on the server, where in general most of what we've done up to this point, we've still been on the desktop after we installed the software to make the services configure and things, or at least we could have been on the desktop, could have also been on the server. Now we're going to actually have to be on the server to make several of these issues happen. So I've gone to the service manager on my ArcGIS server. So I had to do some logins and things like that. And I went over and I clicked on site. When I clicked on site, you see this menu appear. And I clicked on data store. And in the data store, there is um, the ability to register databases not what we're going to do in this part, we're going to do that in the next part of this video, and register folders. And that's the area that we want to work on in this part. We want to be able to say, okay, on this machine is this information that we want to then be able to use um, without moving the data. So that is what we're trying to make happen here. So I clicked on that button that we saw before. I've created a folder that we want to register, so it's I called it test2. I told it what the path was. I gave it a IP address, or I could have given it a conical name. And I've given it a publishing path. The publishing path must be in a place that can be seen by Internet Explorer. And so basically, what gets published out on the web is things that are in a folder called INETPUB slash www root. This is on my server machine. This is my local C drive on my server machine. And if we didn't put anything here, we would put it like the name of the machine or the IP address of the machine in a web browser and didn't put anything here, it would then display what was in the default HTML file. So this is what is actually that IIS publishing area. This is the critical area and this needs to be there to make sure that we can publish things out. If everything works the right way, you should then click save and the, then test the connection and you're going to get a check mark showing up here that the connection is a valid connection. And then you should be able to go back to your desktop, map to this folder that you created that's on your storage array, build a map, and then when you go to publish this map, it should automatically publish the information to your server the information staying on that storage array and only 
then creating a handshake. So your desktop is sending the information to the storage array. You close all that out after you do your publication. And then on the server side, you should be able to then see the information that's part of the map package that, or excuse me, the map service that you sent across. That's the way it should work. It should be pretty straightforward. Notice we want a screen image of this, and hopefully everything works right. If it doesn't, this is a workaround that I've been able to create. Um, so there are numerous possible issues, as I noted. And the biggest thing is, how do I know if I have a problem? On the server machine, the validated works fine. And if you're in ArcMap on the same machine, it probably will work if ArcMap's on the server. If ArcMap's not on the server, then you're probably going to have an issue, or you may have an issue, I shouldn't say probably, you may have an issue of handshaking. How are you going to know that? When you go to publish out your map, it's going to say it's going to move a bunch of data over to your server. It should be moving no data to your server because you have got this pathway for things to be stored in. And if you get this thing that's moving data over and you've already made all this handshake and everything looked right, then that's where you got a problem. So how do you fix the problem? Well, after lots of discussions with people, you need to create a local account on this data storage machine that matches the ArcGIS server account. So therefore, you have on the ArcGIS server an account already written. You want to make sure this account matches so that there is no longer any handshaking issues going on there. You need to make sure the account is read and write so it has permissions to the folder to make this all happen. Um, connecting to the ArcGIS server from your desktop machine you, to register your lo storage location um, from the server. Do this through our catalog. So you want to do this registration through our catalog instead of being actually being on the server machine. In theory, you should be able to do this by being on the server machine. This has been one of the ways we've been able to fix the problem. Um, it's suggested that you connect as an administrator and not as a publisher. I don't really like that. I've seen that be the way that it makes it work. But you don't want to give everybody administrative rights to your machine. So in theory, you should be able to make this happen as a publisher. But again, I've had some problems with it, at least in the version 10.3 that this is based upon. Register your data source from your desktop machine, not from your server side. This might help also. Um, this is done by right-clicking on the server connection and going to server properties. The windows look basically the same as what we just showed you. So when I do that, here's the window. I'm on data store. I'm on my I'm on my desktop machine here and the ArcGIS server properties from my desktop machine through Arc Catalog to get here. And you notice here we got registered photos. We're not in the database area yet. We're just looking at here and I've registered some folders. This was the one I registered earlier by being on the server and then I, re I registered a new folder called test3 um, here. And this seems to make things work pretty well. So you see here, fix the data storage, provide a name for your folder, provide the map path to the folder, provide the actual pathway to the data using the machine name or IP address. That's down here. Once this has all been Completed, click OK. Um, this is possible to be done on the ArcGIS Server Manager, but it seems to be more effective from the desktop, as I've stated here already to you. And this is one solution that seems to fix the problem. So hopefully, in newer versions of the software, this will not be an issue. And we plan on creating a video for you actually going through this process so you can actually see how the process is done. Connecting a relational database is similar to what we were just talking about connecting a storage array. You go to the properties window on the server. Again, you could be on your desktop to do this also. It seems to make a difference that the server and the desktop are the same version. You get rid of 
some handshaking things going on there. Um, you must use the correct bit amount. The servers are probably 64-bit, all of them, today. So it's probably going to be a 64-bit server. Um, your instructor should provide you the pathway to the relational database. But each of you will not have your own relational database. Everybody will be working off of the same relational database. And you need to make sure that you have the right permissions to the relational database, that these are the responsibilities of your instructor to provide. So this is the window that we had before. Again, we can be on the server or we can be in our catalog. We want to add a database here. Um, so you can click to register or select pull down and select register your database. Either way, it wants to know the database you want to register. We already had one called USA registered. Then you click add and then this, the OK button should be available to you at that point. After you do that, you have to tell it what kind of server it is. We're using a SQL server. Give it the instance. That's the name of my database, jf-sql-arc1. You're going to do database authentication. You're not going to do Windows authentication to your database, but you're going to do database authentication. This should be the information provided by your instructor to connect. Once this information is correct, this pull down will then work and it will provide you a list of potential databases you can connect to. One I chose was Campus for this example for my personal screen's information. And again, take a snapshot of this to give to your instructor. Finally, at the end of all this information, there is going to be a quiz, a written quiz, that you will take about installing the software, creating services, creating your connections to your data store, as well as creating connections to um, the database server, as well as information about parameters that you can set and what some of these parameters do for you. So there will be a quiz at the end of this module. Good luck on us connecting to your storage array and also your relational database.